blessings, this undeserved favor, this credit for something I didn't do but he pays me for anyway came over 2,000 some years ago. He came full of grace and truth is what uh, John said in verse uh, 114 he said when he, he came full of grace and truth. The law was given by Moses but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. 2,000 some years ago grace came. He came to the earth full of grace and truth and when he died everything his father commanded him to do he said it is finished. It's finished. That's what he said. And so after he said that and he died he spilled out everything that was in him. Everything that was his became ours when he died. Emptied grace. Which, what do you mean everything became his? Well, you, you, you know how it happens. When people pass, they can't take anything with them. You know that in the natural. When they are gone, they can't take anything with them. So everything that they have and own, when they leave, it has to get left to somebody. And if you have families that are well planning, they have a will. <laughs> If they don't have a will, then you have people fighting over what they left. Yeah. Hello, I don't know if anybody is just, uh, only I know crazy people, okay. <laughs> but if, if, if they're planned, they have a will, okay. So, so when Jesus went, when he passed, when he left the earth, he left the earth and everything he had, he left, but he left it in the will of God. And God said, who is ever in his will has inherited his stuff. Now, we know he came full of grace. And when he died, grace was emptied. And who is ever in his will has now received his grace. Are you following me? So we receive his grace. Because he passed. He had to go because that was the only way to transfer what he had to us. He came full of grace and truth. So let me let me back up and just um just try to make this a little bit more plainer. So so he says John um 1 17 says, For through Moses came the law, through Moses for, for the law was given by Moses. And so we were, we were following the law, right? Remember, we, we talk about this a lot, right? We were following the law, what to do, what not to do, what we can't do, what not to do. And we were following the law, but we couldn't keep the law, right? And since we could not keep the law, God said, I got to send them something different. And so he sent his son full of grace. So his son, guess what his son was? His, his, if his son is full of grace, what was God trying to get to me? God was trying to get grace to me, but his son was the package. You see what I'm saying? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and who shall ever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So God was trying to give me his son. What does his son get me? I got a son. What, 
does God's son get me? Well, it wasn't the son. It was what the son possessed it. The son was the package. And in the package, he filled it full of grace. And so when the son came down here, he was packaged full of grace. And when he died, the package was open. And whoever received the package received not just the son, but what was in the son. The grace and truth now is yours because before you had grace, you had to keep the law. I had to keep the law. I had to, I couldn't do this. I can't do that. Can't eat this. Can't drink that. Got to follow this. Got to follow that. Trying to keep the law. I can't keep the law. Not making it well. God says, I see. They can't keep the law. So I'm going to send them grace. Grace is his spiritual blessings. His, his, his undeserved favor that says, though you didn't keep it, still I'll give you this. And he had to send it. He put it in the package. Put it in the sun. So his son came full. You could just see his son carrying all the grace, just full of grace and truth. And so he had to pass in order for everything in him to be transferred. So he was emptied, right? He came full of grace and truth. But when he passed, he emptied the basket. He emptied the bowl. He emptied the barrel. He emptied himself. And for those that will receive, have now received grace, the spiritual blessings, the undeserved favor, the credit for something that they didn't do. So I got credit for keeping the law, though I can't keep the law. Though I stumble, he says, I don't see that I see you, my son, you have his grace. I see you as right now. I'm not perfect, God, but I see you as right. For those that receive. Okay, you follow me now? A little background, a little, little. Just, just so we can understand. Uh, so into the text, this is what Timothy is saying in 10, 2 Timothy 2, verse 1. He's, so he's talking, this is Paul writing to Timothy. He says, 2 Timothy 2, 1, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus. He says, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now, what's going on here is Paul is in jail. He's old. And he's getting old now. He's about to pass. So, Timothy, he calls his son. He's the young man he, he brought up. He says, I remember you. I knew your grandmother Eunice and them. And you need to stir up the gift that's in you because I know who your mama and grandma are. So he raised them up, make him his minister. What's about to happen is he's about to pass the baton to him. Paul is about to pass away. And he's saying, Tim, you, you're about to be next. I'm, I'm old. I'm about to pass away. But you, my friend, are going to be next in charge, taking care of these churches, and I need you to be strong in the grace. Somebody say grace. grace. Be strong in the grace. Now, we define grace. Be strong in the undeserved favor. Be strong in the spiritual blessings. Be strong that in that, that you have not done or not deserved, but Christ has given you credit for. Be strong in that. That is in Christ Jesus. Why is he telling them this? He's telling them this because Tim is about to, Timothy is about to experience or take on a lot of responsibility. now. Paul is about to pass. Tim is about to have to be the leader of these churches. Tim's going to have to go to these churches that, that Paul had scattered out, had, had planted here and there. He's going to have to be the successor. And just like... Um, just like us, when a big responsibility comes up on us, Tim had some questions. Tim had some doubt. He, Tim, Tim was like, can I even stand up to the pressure? Can, can I arise to the occasion? Can I? I'm just young. I'm just small. I'm nowhere near Paul. He started thinking down of him. So, and we do the same thing, right? You know, we try to weigh out ourselves upon what ratings or statuses of other people we try to rate ourselves. And so Tim is sitting here and he's thinking, he's like, well, you know, 
would I work enough, hard enough? Would I study enough? Would, could, could I learn enough? Could I pray enough? Could I witness enough? Could I preach enough? He's comparing himself to Paul. Right? Paul is about to go. You're about to pass me this baton. Can I feel those shoes? Can I pray like he prayed? Can I teach like he teach? Can I study like he studied? Can I endure like he endure? Can I strive like he strive? Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I? Can I? And this is what Paul was helping him understand. Everything he was worrying about was I. Can I? Can I? He was worried about his own ability. He was worried about his own words. And Paul was teaching him here that what you're worried about is your own ability. You're worried about your own works. What I need you to do is be strong in the grace. Don't be strong in yourself. Be strong in the grace. The grace. Go be strong in the undeserved favor. Be strong in the spiritual blessings of God. Be strong in God doing stuff for you that you didn't even do. And he's giving you credit for. Be strong in those things that are in Christ Jesus. You know, when we look at people that are successful and we, we try to measure ourselves and we say, what is so different about them? What did they have that I don't have? How did they be what I didn't be? And, and, and the only real tactic is someone who pressed and was strong in believing and wasn't quitting. You, you look at them. I've, I've been in places in my life where I look and say, man, I'm, I'm just as fast as him. You know what I'm saying? I'm just as strong as him. I play as well as him, but I don't get a scholarship. I'm, I'm faster. I'm looking at abilities. And the only difference that I found out is that people that believe in themselves go farther. He says here, Tim. I call him Tim because we cool like that. Tim. <laughs> Quit looking at your own abilities. I need you to be strong in the grace the undeserved favor. Understand that there is an undeserved favor and spiritual blessing emptied out that you need to take charge of, take authority of, move in. You hear what I'm saying? We can't just sit here and say, but God, I don't. But God, I'm not. But God, I don't have enough but God, I didn't go to school long. But God, I didn't. Do you hear what I'm saying? In the grace. So Romans 11 and 6 talks about grace and work. It's a familiar verse because it, 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 it breaks down how the two cannot coexist. The word says, and if by grace, then it is no more works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of your works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. I'll read it again. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. And if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So if we have the grace of God, he says, this is Paul teaching here in Romans as well. When we have the grace, then it is no more of something I have to work for. Because if I have to work for it, then it is not grace. Right? We said grace was the undeserved, unworked for. So, if I have this by grace, then I need not worry about my works. Because if I'm worried about my works, then it will not be grace. And if it be by works, if it be by works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, my work is not work. So, the two cannot mix together. You either are in grace or you're doing it by your works. But you cannot work for grace. You hear what I'm saying? And so Paul was trying to teach Timothy this because Timothy needs to now tune in, tap in, 
be strong in the grace and not pay attention to the works, his ability. He needs to be strong in the grace and not pay attention to the works, the ability. I'm about to make somebody successful now. Because the only reason we don't and don't and don't is because we pay attention to our ability, right? I can't because, I won't because, I can't. And so we're looking at ability, and if you are moving by ability, that's fine. But if you move by ability, you cancel grace. Because work and grace don't coexist. So it's either by work or it's by grace. You hear what I'm saying? Now, if you want to do it by work, that's fine. Because you can work and earn. You work and you earn. But when it comes by grace, it's undeserved, though I didn't work for it. When it comes by grace, God gives more than what I've worked for. And so work is good. Work is fine. But I'd have come to my places in life where I need the grace of God. God, I don't want to work as hard. God, I'm getting tired. I know I can get there if I keep doing this and doing that and doing that, but I'll keep receiving a check that matches my work. I like to see the grace of God, the, 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 the benefits of God that don't match my level of work. You hear what I'm saying? So when people, when, when the grace happens, people be able to look at you and say, wait a minute, how did? Because what you got don't add up to what you work. What you receive don't match your ability. How did you get in the position? Because your degree only... If it don't line up with work, it is grace. It's the grace of God. It's the grace of God. You shouldn't be in that position. You only... You only right. It don't add up. Because it wasn't my ability. It's the grace. It's not my work. So he's, he's, he's trying to help Timothy fix his mind. Because Timothy is about to be the next person. Because Apostle Paul was about to pass. And he said, I need you to be strong in the grace. I'm moving forward saying, God, you're going to have to help me with this. And he's got to rise up as a leader knowing that he's just a young minister. But he got to know it's not about his works. It's not about his education. It's not about his age. It's not about how long he's been doing it. He's got to be strong in the grace. Somebody say grace. He's got to be strong in the grace. And so, so, so by grace we receive what we didn't work for. So now he needs to be strong. But he's little. So his strength is going to have to come by the grace of God. He wants the promotion, but he doesn't have the degree. So now this is going to have to come by the grace of God. Amen. He's got to lead all these churches, but he ain't led one yet. So his leadership is going to have to come by the grace of God. And so when he begins to acknowledge that and recognize that and now pour his attention into recognizing the grace of God, talking to God, knowing that if I'm going to do anything, God is going to have to be by your. And so now in all his ways, he acknowledges him and he directs his path. In all his ways, he acknowledged him and he gives him the strength. He gives him the wisdom. He gives him the knowledge. God, I didn't go to school for it, but God's grace gives me the wisdom. I didn't do this, but God's grace brings it for me. I'm not strong enough, but God's grace makes me strong. Paul says, Tim, snap out of yourself. I need you to get out of your ability and I need you to be strong in the grace of God. Now, I'm going to close with this because we, 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 we understand that grace was um, this fool in Christ Jesus. And when, the reason he tells him he needs to be strong in it because we have this misconception that when we need something, we have this misconception that we got to go pray and ask God to do and bring 
and give like he's still giving. <laughs> let, 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 let me help you. We have this conception. We have this conception that everything I need, I need to go ask God for. I need to ask God to do. I need to go ask him, can I have? I need to go tell him to do something like he is still doing. And the problem with that is that he's already done. There is nothing left for God to give. What do you mean? I ask God to give me this every day. Yeah. Truth is, he already gave. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He gave all he had way back then. So there is no more giving for him to do. It's already given. He gave his son full of grace and truth. He sent him down with everything. And when he died, he emptied out everything. And so now, when we ask him, it's not him making a new package and sending it to you. He already sent everything. Well, Pastor, then why do I need to pray and ask? He says, he, he says in all your ways, acknowledge me. And I'll direct your path. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. These things are already here. What Paul needs is telling Tim now is I need you to be strong in the grace. I need you to stand up and walk in what's already there. You're looking at your ability. You're looking at this. The grace of God is already tilted, poured out. It's already emptied. We just don't walk in it. So, how, what do you mean? I'm so, I'm so used to asking God for stuff. You need to ask God for wisdom and knowledge on how to learn, gain, and get something that you don't know where it is, but he already gave it to you. Well, how? It's in his son. Right? He is in heaven. We are on earth. To get something to us, he had to put it in the package. The package was his son. Everything you need, everything you could have asked for, everything you could imagine, he put it in his son. And said, son, send this down to them. His son was merely the package. And if we receive his son, we receive everything already given. If you have received Christ already, you have access to everything. The grace of God on your life, the undeserved favor, the, the spiritual blessings, these things are on your life already. Tim, be strong in it now. Walk in it now, Tim. It's there. You just keep looking at your own ability. That's it. You, you holding yourself out, saying, "But I can't because I." He says, I, "I gave you my son." But Lord, I need you to give me more strength. I gave you my son. But God, I need, uh, 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 I need, I need prosperity. And I need the job. I gave you my son. I, I gave you everything I had. That, that was all I had. I took everything in heaven, put it in my son, shipped them to you. I gave you everything. There's nothing else for me to send you. It, you want me to send you to sink? I gave you everything. And we said, but God, I need it. I sent it to you. That's why anything we need, we call on the name of Jesus. Because everything we need is in the name of Jesus. Everything we need, he put in Jesus, sent Jesus to us. If we receive Jesus, we now have access to everything we need. So he's talking to Tim because Tim is doubting himself. I'm too young. I'm too weak. Uh, I have.
haven't been a minister long enough. Can I even preach like him? Can I pray like him? How are people going to look up to me? How can I save people? How can I? I will never be like Paul. I'll never be like Paul. I'll never be like Paul. Uh, uh, come out of your works. Come out of yourself. I need you to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He sent his son and his son is the package for everything we need. But we got to learn how to walk in it. The, the problem is we have it. We say, we're Christians. What does that mean? We haven't been walking with Christ saying, I'm a Christian. Don't have no idea what that means to you. You're a Christian. You have everything you need. Like, one of the, uh, my, um, I'm going to close with this. One of my African pastors came here from Africa and, 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 he, and, he, and he said, he said, this, this, this package, this is, this is Jesus. This is Jesus. And God came and gave this to us. And we said, ooh, thank you, Lord. I'm a Christian now. I'm a Christian now. This means I'm a Christian. And so in life, we go on around life and, and, and we see other people and what other people are doing. And we say, God, I, I, I want a camera. And God says, it, it, it's in there. And you, I, oh, oh, thank you, God. My prayers have been answered. All along, you always had the camera. God, I, God, I, I need you today. I, for some reason, God, this is going on in my life, and I need Facebook. <laughs> I gave you Facebook, huh? Oh, thank you, Lord. My prayers have been answered. I've always given you Facebook a long time ago. And so we go to God with prayers for things that are already in what he gave us. He gave it to us a long time ago. And so we go to God begging and praying. And God, I need this. I need this. And God says, there's an app for that. I need this. I need that. There's an app for that too. But God, I need this. And I know you don't have that. Yep, there is an app for that too. And so what we need to do is to walk more in the knowledge of what was given to me. Understanding what Christ means for me now. And now I don't have to ask God for blessings and favor. I walk in them because I know I already got them. I don't have to ask God to get me out of this. I know that by his stripes I'll be healed. I don't need to ask God to give me something he already gave me 2,000 something years ago. 